I'm with Bruce Jones, and he's the president of Tax Wealth, and they are located in Newport Beach, California. Bruce, tell me a little description about your business and what you do. Okay. Well, Tax Wealth itself is a has been around for 23 years now, and we are a tax analysis and solutions research company that's couched in the financial planning process itself. Mm -hmm. So what we do, uh, not only for our own clients who are property owners, business owners, owners of just about any type of capital asset, we uh, also function in coming in as, a, in as a support capacity to CPAs, attorneys, other financial advisors, real estate professionals, business brokerage professionals, and helping solve their clients' tax concerns uh, to maximize their profit and income at the same time. All right, great. And then also give me an explanation of financial planning. Financial planning is very misunderstood, I think. Mm -hmm. I've taught financial planning and tax management since 1974, so l allow me to be as succinct as I possibly can. If you bring it down to its core, financial planning is simply making the most effective and efficient use of three things that we have. And this is true for Bill Gates on down to us. Mm -hmm. First one is disposable income the amount of income that you have left over after maintaining your standard of living. Mm -hmm. Secondly, are accumulated assets. That could be uh, equities and properties. That could be jewelry. That could be your residence. That could be all these different things that you've acc accumulated during your working years. And then third is time. And that brings in a thing called compounding. Your dollars making her more dollars, those dollars together making more dollars than stone balling for your benefit. Mm -hmm. What I've observed through the years, which is now 42 years in, in the financial services industry, mm -hmm. is that most people only rely upon the accumulated assets and usually dismiss the disposable income because they think that there's not much left over after maintaining one standard of living mm -hmm. and probably couldn't do much with that except maybe put it in a bank and hope for the very best. And they're absolutely wrong. Okay. So financial planning is making the most effective and efficient use really of both accumulated assets and disposable income over time. Okay. I know you are, you are a tax wealth expert. How does tax planning come in to fit in with financial planning? There are four areas of financial planning in this order. First step is liquidity for emergency purposes. That should always be the first step. Uh, most people use a bank savings loan and credit union. Uh, great place to put money, horrible interest in today's market. Mm -hmm. Uh, inflation and taxes impacted even further uh, on that. Mm -hmm. So what I subscribe and, and encourage people to do is a two-tier emergency fund system as first step. Put as minimum an amount you can into a fixed account in a bank savings loan and credit union knowing you're going to go backwards because of taxes and inflation. And put the bulk of the emergency funds uh, in areas that are tax deferred and or tax free but they're liquidable by law within seven days. Mm -hmm. So you're maximizing your your assets in what is typically in, in a very inefficient area. So step number one is having a realistic emergency fund. Step number two is tax planning. Mm -hmm. Step number three is your normal investment posture, mm -hmm. right, whatever that might be. And lastly, your fourth is estate planning. Okay. Now having to do with tax planning, there are four approaches to tax planning. I've always remembered them through this acronym of debt, D-E-B-T. As you're paying your taxes each year, you're reducing your debt to the government. Mm -hmm. D stands for deferral. That would be like a 1031 exchange in real estate. Could be a 401k, it could be an IRA, it could be any other type of what is called a qualified retirement plan. Mm -hmm. And there's other areas in regards to deferral that can be looked at. Uh, secondly would be the E, that's eliminate taxes. Mm -hmm. There's three approaches to elimination of taxes. One having to do with tax credits, which is a dollar for dollar, for dollar reduction off the tax, not off the taxable income. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. Mm -hmm. Secondly would be the, if you're selling your personal residence, you have, for a married couple, they have up to a half a million dollars tax-free that's coming to them. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly is through charitable tax planning. Mm -hmm. So we have deferral, we have elimination. B stands for becomes. Now, that's not really the word I'm looking for, but I need the B so I wouldn't mess up the acronym. Mm -hmm. But B stands for becomes, or actually the word is conversion, where you're converting one thing into another. Mm -hmm. An example of that for real estate property owners, for example, is a thing called cost segregation. Mm -hmm. 
That's the ability under tax law to literally change the character of the components that are tied to the property that qualify for this from real property that has an appreciation schedule of either 27 and a half years if it's like apartments, multifamily, mm -hmm. or 39 years if it's commercial, like the building we're sitting in now, mm -hmm. and change those components to personal property and thereby accelerating those benefits to uh, 5, 7, or 15 years. Mm -hmm. Now that gives the property owner more tax benefit immediately that they can use to apply against taxable gain on other assets they may want to sell, or it gives them an instant increase of cash flow tax-free. And then lastly is T, and that's transfer. Mm -hmm. And there, through the years, the IRS has taken a lot of the transfer techniques away. Most of them, in my view, fall within the charitable tax planning field and a few other places. Okay. Can you give an example of what you've been able to accomplish for real estate owner or clients? Okay. Let's go back to cost segregation for a moment. Had a young lady who inherited her father's estate. Uh, part of what she inherited was a one-third interest in a strip center in Downing that her father owned with two friends for over 40 years. Her two new partners were completely depreciated out, so they had no tax benefit, but under the law she gets what is called a step-up in basis mm -hmm. to the value of the one-third interest of in the property, which was her father's, mm -hmm. the value at the time of his passing. Well, cost segregation ended up giving her 182000 plus in tax savings, which is the same thing as an equal amount of new cash flow tax-free. Wow. Another example, uh, aside from cost segregation, had a person who was selling a $1.4 million uh, rental in Newport Beach. Mm -hmm. He's owned it for just shy of 30 years, has severe tax problems, not only the capital gains taxes and the depreciation recapture taxes, but he had a thing called mortgage over basis, which means that the mortgage to be paid off at close of escrow is less than what his net basis in the property is, that being what he originally paid for it, plus capital improvements minus depreciation. All of that was taxable as ordinary income. Mm -hmm. So in his case, had he sold it traditionally mm -hmm. and paid off the mortgage, he would have had to come out of pocket to pay all the taxes because there wasn't enough equity in the property to pay them all. Right. We fashioned a solution for them to, to where we solved that problem and we deferred all the capital gains taxes and other taxes that would have been paid for the year of sale. We deferred that for 30 years and through a third party private lender that we have established provided him a near equivalent amount of, nails, of the net sales proceeds up front tax free at close of escrow. There's a lot of information there that you know that a lot of people don't know out there. How can they get a hold of you? Uh, I have a toll-free number. This is good anywhere in the country. Mm -hmm. And that's 1-800-300-4723. Okay. And I offer uh, a simple conversation about their concerns. Mm -hmm. There is no charge for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we want to do is find out what their real concerns are, allow them to understand what the concerns are, and up front, without cost or obligation, at least get a clear idea as to direction that could be looked at, and then they are armed with the information that they need to move forward appropriately. Very good. I appreciate your time, Bruce Jones, Tax Well, based out of Newport Beach. Thank you. Thank you.